Hi room. guys, it's Janet. I have Megan Hammond with me from North Care Hospital here in Georgia. First question to you. What are your thoughts and feelings on current events? Current events. I do try to stay completely up to date with current events, but I'm not going to lie. Sometimes I stay more current with sports <laughs> um, just because I guess the world we work in. Um, thoughts on it? I like the way some things are going, um, especially with race. And I know you and I run EDAC, so we both got to talk about all the different race issues we might have had, you know, going through college or in jobs and stuff like that. Um, I want to put this so it's not, I guess it's okay. We can, it's a tough topic. It can be a little insensitive. Um, I definitely want to see a bigger change for racial injustice. Um, I think it's good that we're all speaking out more and more. Um, and it's funny because I always get the question of like, which side <laughs> am I with? And I'm always like, what? Because some people think I'm half black and half white. Or I always get the, well, you don't really know what you are. And I'm like, wait a minute, yes I do. I'm Native American, I'm not black or white. Um, I actually recently had this conversation with a 16 year old high school kid who, you know, couldn't decide, oh, we can't say that in front of her. Or like, wait, yeah, we can because one of her parents is black. And I was like, neither of my parents are black. And he was like, yes, they are. I was like, no, they're not. <laughs> Both my parents are Native American. So yeah, I, I speak for a small percentage of us in some areas. Um, and it was just funny because he was like taken aback and I was like, like, I, I probably got defensive probably. I was like, mm, no, it's like, no. And he was just like, I I'm sorry, Miss Megan. It's like, yeah, you should probably watch what you say or just what you assume. You can't always assume who you're talking in front of. Like, it's cool to talk like that or it's okay to say that. Um, and so we try to, in our athletic training room, uh, my coworker and I pretty have like, it's an open space. You know, it's supposed to be where people are supposed to feel, kids are supposed to feel safe, they can come to us or whatever. Um, but, you know, it's also a great space that we can call them out when they're wrong. And we can kind of, like, I see where you guys are seeing things that are going wrong or see that you feel things that are unfair, but you also have to assume that somebody's just not always with you because they've never been through that. And like I told him today, I was like, our experiences are completely different. I was like, I always have to defend what I am. Because people, I said, like you, came at me and was like, no, one of your parents has to be black. And I was like, no, they don't. Like, so I definitely want to see more. I want to see, like, a lot of the other races come out and speak up for themselves as well. Um, I am, you know, behind the Black Lives Matter movement. But I think, you know, all those, those little small races that sometimes probably get forgotten about, um, you know, speak up and see everything that's going on. So you've recently changed work settings. Explain that a little bit and talk about some of the struggles and some of the surprises you've experienced. Okay, so yes, I recently moved from Norfolk, Virginia to Georgia. I live in Gwinnett County here. Actually, I live in Lawrenceville. Um, I work for Northside Hospital Sports Medicine Department. So I left the collegiate setting after I think 12 years. So that was a big I've always been in the collegiate setting, of course, from undergrad all the way through. Um, it's definitely been an adjustment. Um, it was scary. I'm not going to lie. Like, some people are like, we can't believe you left. But I'm thinking, you have no idea. I can't believe I left. Um, and my partner, John, and I, we, he went over this, like, multiple. He's like, you don't have to move right away. You know, you can wait. You can stay there. I was like, no, I'm going to do this. Um, and I got a phone call about, hey, um, from somebody, from somebody else in the, um, I guess, inner circle of athletic training world. Um, you need to send your resume to this person because they're looking for an athletic trainer. And I already told them you'd be a great fit. <laughs> I was like, oh, okay. So I called and I think it was an interview, but I don't think it was a real interview. <laughs> it was kind of like, so this is what you would be doing. Are you still interested after all of this we're telling you? I'm like, yeah, I still am. I am. Um, so, yep, I took the plunge and left my job from ODU after eight years. Um, 
and moved down here. And now I work in the secondary setting. I work at a high school here. Um, and it has been a huge change. Like I didn't think it was going to be this big, but it really is. But it's actually a good, ch it's a good change. I mean, I literally work like 40 hours a week and I think that is the biggest change ever. Um, it's nice that people don't call me all hours of the night, you know, it is what it is. Um, but I'm actually really, really liking it. And the kids are actually awesome. Um, they just want somebody there most of the time. Um, and there's two of us at my school, at the high school we're at. We are a pretty big high school. We have so many sports. I mean, we have flag football. I didn't know that was a thing until I got here. Um, and flag football is supposed to be non-contact. I'm telling you right now, stuff's contact. I've treated a lot of injuries in the last like week. <laughs> um, but those kids just want somebody here. Like, and it's not expected. Like, and we try to balance everything out so that football doesn't get everything um, or get all of our attention because they are kind of a monster of a sport. Um, so, you know, we have two athletic training rooms. So we try to balance between the two and make sure everybody gets covered. Um, but it's been a great adjustment. And I'm actually really loving it. I didn't think I would. So changing gears a little bit, have you ever felt due to your race that responsibilities mm -hmm. in the profession as limited or how has it in fact impacted you? Um, I don't think it's necessarily limited me. Um, I think at times I got more responsibility by default. Um, unfortunately, especially when you work in a state school system, um, and there's different committees or different things for different things. They always need somebody that's a minority and a female or one or the other, or you have, to have at least one female, one minority person on a committee or whatever. And of course, and it, every time I saw my name on something, I was like, there I go, checking two boxes. And no, it's just, it, I think at times it's like, whatever it is, what it is. But when you look at it and you like sit back and think about it, you're like, wait, why does it always have to be like me or this person or that person in the department? But then you look at us like, well, when you're a handful of minority females, it happens. Um, so I think in some ways it didn't limit me. It gave me more responsibility. And at times it was kind of annoying and frustrating because you're like, am I really only on this committee because I checked two boxes or am I really on here because you value my opinion? Like you really value my opinion or you value me as a coworker or you know what I mean? So um, or I've been at different at other places. Um, you know, you get invited to certain things, certain functions. You're like, wait, why is the rest of my colleagues not here? And then you look around the room and you're like, that's why, <laughs> this is why. Cause they needed a little, little splash of color. <laughs> so, I mean, I, it's just, I don't think it's ever really limits me. I think it's always giving me more responsibility. Or people always look to you more because you are the minority. So you're supposed to be able to relate to certain like subjects or topics or kids. And you're like, just because I'm a minority or a person of color or, you know, does it mean I relate to all different situations or certain situations? I mean, so I don't think it's ever limited me. I think it's always giving me more responsibility. <laughs> How did you resolve those feelings of being chosen for these committees or responsibilities because of your race? I think sometimes it's like, all right, let's just get this over with. But then I will say, as I started doing more, uh, more and more committees and different things, um, there was more minorities on the committees. So it's okay. So now you don't just need me for my being a minority. Maybe you need to be a female. I don't know. Um, but, and I actually like that because sometimes I did, I probably did voice my opinion to my superiors that this is like frustrating. Stop picking me just because, or you'd have, I'd have colleagues like, well, how come she always gets them? I was like, because I checked two boxes. And I know I probably said that like very like, <sighs> like annoyed by it. And I'm pretty sure people probably noticed it and it did get frustrating at times. It's like, stop picking me because of that. Um, so, but as think, times went on, it's like, I noticed that there was more and more people that, you know, were a minority or a person of color that it just wasn't me. So it's like, okay, now I, maybe you do value my opinion and you do care what I think. <laughs> so. So tell me an embarrassing story 
from your athletic training career? Okay, so when I was on EDAC, we were in Baltimore for convention. And it was one morning, we had like a coffee and continental breakfast, whatever. And also that same morning, I was asked to do like a interview thing that they do like every day at convention. I can't think of the name of it at the top of my head. So at breakfast, get ready to load buses too to go hit the hill. And I had this cream sweater on and here I am talking to people. And to me, I guess they consider like, you know, they're like the big wigs of the NATA. It's like the people that, you know, you see in your NATA news all the time. We're always speaking about something. Spilled coffee all over the arm of my, my shirt. Like my cream sweater was like, look, it was brown. It was bad. It was embarrassing. Um, I think I recovered quickly because not a ton of people noticed, but people immediately around me definitely noticed. And then I had to go take a picture for this interview. So I was like, great, coffee sweater. Make sure I turn the right angle so nobody in the picture can see this like stained cream sweater. Yeah, it was quite embarrassing. It was quite embarrassing. Live and learn and you adapted and overcome like athletic trainers do. That's what we do. <laughs> so, I completely forgot to give you an opportunity to introduce your little coworker over there. Oh yes, my little coworker. This is Lambo. You want to say hi? You're not gonna. You're just gonna look at mommy. Okay. This is Lambo. <laughs> he is two years old now. He's a rescue, little bully breed. Um, he's probably more round than he is tall. Um, okay. But when I was at ODU, I used to bring him to the office a lot, and so he was like our little. Um, emotional support dog too. He's our little doggy therapy. So he got used to all the field hockey and lacrosse girls loving all on him. So and, and I promise you those girls miss him more than you. <laughs> oh I definitely they <laughs> definitely, he has his own Instagram page and they all definitely follow him. <laughs> yep. He does but he is the sweetest. People think he's mean and scary but he's really not. He is a cuddler. This couch is basically his couch. So if you, we always tell people, okay, if you sit on our couch, he's probably gonna come cuddle with you. I can't stop it. So, but yep, yeah, this is Lambo. Oh, he is asleep right now. So, all right, Megan. Next couple of minutes for you. Your final statements. Final statements. Um, I think anybody that wants to get in this profession. Um, I think you should want to get into it and also have a voice for people and not just stand back. Like I love being involved, um, whether it's at the district level or national level. Um, I love speaking up for anybody that feels like they don't have a voice. Um, and I think it's important. So I think anybody that's young in the profession or that wants to get into or that's thinking about, you know, this may be something you want to do. Um, really like look into like what they're to do at your state and district level. Um, I just had a talk with not too long ago, a student from Georgia. Um, it was great because she was just trying to figure out how do you get involved? And I was like, you literally just talk to people. That's all I did is I talked to people. Um, and I definitely would want to see more minorities in leading roles in the profession. I think it's definitely come a long way, even from, I mean, our early days on EDAC when we used to talk about this and how can we get more and more people involved and how can we do that. Um, I think there's a seat at the table for all of us. I think we just have to go and take it. Um, go and apply for all that, those positions and take it and let your voice be heard. Um, I definitely would like to see more young people in roles. Um, I think that's improved a little bit, but I'd definitely like to see more and more involvement there as well. Um, so anybody that's interested in being an athletic trainer or you're not sure about it or something like that, just talk to somebody, reach out and talk to anybody. I've talked to several people. I've had parents from my yoga class ask me to talk to their kid about my profession because they think their kid is interested in this way and really wants to do it, but they're unsure. And I'm like, okay, fine. Just give her my number. Have them call me. You know, here's my email. I have no problem, you know, and I just want to see more and more of that. It's just that like organic mentorship that I think all of us can do we just need to be more open and approachable so. megan thank you so much for your time and i'll talk to you thank soon you. all right bye-bye